Hello and welcome to the getting started video of Databrain. In this video I'm going to show you the basic interface of the Databrain editor, how you can create custom data objects, how you can access the data and how to enable runtime serialization. Ok, let's start by creating our data library first. The data library is our main data container which stores all data objects. Right click in the project view and select create, Databrain, Data Library. Double click on the newly created asset. As you can see a new window shows up. This is the main Databrain editor where you can manage all of your data objects. On the left side you can find all available data types categorized by namespaces and derived types. This might look a bit different on your setup depending if you have installed other Databrain add-ons. As you can see in my case I have also installed the stats, tech tree, localization and logic add-on. The next column shows you all existing data objects of the selected type. The third column finally shows you the actual data of a selected data object. At the top we have a search bar which can be selected by using the shortcut control space. Next to the search bar we have additional modules. First we have the save and load module where you can define which data types should be added to the runtime library and therefore being serialized when saving. Here you can also open the runtime data library. I'm going to talk about this later. The next module is the import module where you can import Google Sheets and CSV files. Next we have the settings module and finally the support module. Now let's just have a quick look at the add-ons I've installed here. First I want you to show you the stats add-on. The stats add-on lets you easily define achievements, values, which can be modified with modifiers and progression curves. Let's quickly check out the progression type. Here I can create a new player progression for example and set the max levels and max XP points and the progression curve, which defines the distribution of the points. The cool thing here is that I can visually see how the points are being distributed with this graph. The tech tree add-on comes with a nice editor which lets you easily create tech trees or skill trees. I can easily set some nodes and create dependencies as well as define the resources it costs to unlock new tech. It also comes with a UI builder component which can build the designed tech tree at runtime. Next we have the logic node editor. The logic node editor is basically a feature rich high level visual scripting editor. It allows you to create action flows within Databrain. So for example I can quickly check if a player has a certain item in his inventory or not. With the result node I can also set a result which will be passed on to the oncomplete event of the graph. In this case here true or false. It is also possible to run logic graphs directly without the need of a scene controller component meaning that the graphs can be executed inside of other data objects, as long as they don't require any references to scene objects. The logic node editor is very versatile and support quite complex graphs. Also custom nodes can be easily created like a new c -sharp file in Unity. The localization add-on expands Databrain with a powerful localization system, including a one-click Google translation feature. Other add-ons do also profit from the localization add-on. So for example you can easily enable localization support for the tech tree add-on which enables localized titles and descriptions. For more information about each add-on simply go to the Databrain website databrain.cc. Alright now let's create our first data type and data object. Simply create a new c -sharp file in your project. Let's name it enemy data. We can now add some data to it. Now in order to make sure Databrain can see our data object, we simply have to derive the class from data object instead of mono behavior. Save the file and wait for compilation. Ok, we can now open the Databrain data library again. As we didn't add a namespace to our data class, we can find our data type in the global foldout here. Great, there it is. 
We can now start working with our data by creating a new data object of our enemy data type. Click on the Create button and name our newly created object. Each data object has a general tab which contains some default data such as the ID, icon, title and description. Now let's have a look at how we can actually access the data at runtime. Create a new script. I'm going to call it enemy. Open the script. In the script we can now simply add a reference of type enemy data. Let's assign the enemy script to an empty game object in our scene. As you can see, we have now a new empty object field of type enemy data. We can now either assign the enemy data object directly from our data brain editor by dragging the object to the field, like this. But let me show you a better way, which unlocks plenty of new features by using the data object property drawer. So let's go back to our enemy script. First, we need a reference to our data library. Now on the enemy data field we can add the data object dropdown attribute and pass the name of the data library reference. In this case data. Save and compile. If we now go back to our scene and select the empty game object we can see that the enemy data object field looks different. Let's quickly assign the data library object. Awesome. Now you can see that our enemy data field has been improved quite a bit. We can now select the enemy data object with this drop down, but we can also unassign the object or even create a new data object of type enemy data. I can then select the newly created data object in the drop down, like this, and directly view the data object in the data brain editor by clicking on the magnifier button here. Now another thing I want you to show you is the expose to inspector attribute, which unlocks another powerful feature of the property drawer. Open the data brain editor and select a data object of type enemy data. Click on the edit button in the top bar. This will automatically open the enemy data script file. Let's add the expose to inspector attribute to our fields here. Save and wait for compilation. Now back to our scene, select the empty game object. On the property drawer we can now click on the button with the eye, which opens the inspector view. As you can see all fields with the exposed to inspector attribute are now visible here and can also be modified, so no need to open the data brain editor if you want to change some values. Now let's have a look at how we can access our data. Open the enemy script. First, in the start method, we have to make sure that our data library has been initialized before we can access any data. Then we can simply access our health data like this. Be aware that you shouldn't modify data from an initial data object, as they won't persist in a build. If you have data which is modifiable at runtime, you will have to make sure to add the data type to the runtime data library. To do this, simply open the data brain editor. Select the save module, look for the enemy data type and check add to runtime data library option. You can see by this icon here that this type is going to be added to the runtime library, meaning that at runtime all data objects of type enemy data are being cloned to the runtime data library. Those runtime data objects can now be used when modifying values. If we go back to our enemy script, we can now get the runtime clone and modify the health value like this. Of course, with DataBrain you can also create runtime objects dynamically, but I won't cover this topic in this video. If you want more information about it, please read the official documentation available at databrain.cc or check out the demo scenes. Now for the last topic in this video I want you to show you how to actually enable serialization of your data objects. We have already enabled the option add to runtime library in the save settings, 
meaning that our data object will be cloned automatically to the runtime data library. But our actual data won't be serialized as we didn't tell DataBrain which fields or data should be serialized. So to tell DataBrain which fields can be serialized, we simply have to add an attribute to our fields. Let's quickly do this. Open the enemy data file and add the DataBrain serialize attribute to our health, speed and position fields. Now our data can be saved and loaded. Let's try it out. In our enemy script I'm going to quickly add two simple IAM GUI buttons for debug purposes. The first button calls the save method on our data library object and the second button calls the load method. I'm also going to register on this unsaved and unloaded event of our data library object. Let's add a third IAM GUI button which will modify our runtime data. And we're also going to add a reference to our runtime data object like this. As a last step, we also have to get the runtime data object back in the loaded method. All right. Let's run the scene and try it out. Now when we select our enemy object, you can see that the inspector here now shows you the initial but also the runtime data. Let's click on save first. Now let's modify the health value. As you can see the runtime data has now different values. We can now load it back by clicking on load. And yes, as you can see, the values has been loaded back. We can also have a look at the runtime library, which contains all runtime data objects. Here again you can also see how the values are being modified. Ok great, this is it for this video. If you want to know more about DataBrain, the available add-ons or want to check out the documentation, simply visit databrain.cc or join our Discord server. Bye!